All right, here's a quick rundown on pairing up Logic and Sibelius uh, in rewire mode. Um, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to make sure that Sibelius is closed. You have to start Sibelius once you're sort of you've already initialized rewire mode. So you're going to first open up Logic, um, and I'm just going to do this from scratch. But you can do this from uh, you know. Uh, other applications. Or I'm sorry. Uh, you can do this from your know, already existing files and things like that. Um, but this is just so you should sort of show how to how to do it from scratch. Um, so I'm waiting to let this load. Something I should I would make sure that you do is go in and make sure that Logic is running in 64-bit mode, um, which you can do that by going to applications. Finding logic, hitting Command I, which pulls up the Get Info app, and just make sure that this box is not checked. So you do not want it to open 32-bit mode. You do want it to open 64-bit mode. If that's an option for you, I don't remember what system you're running. So, anyways, let me go ahead and start a new new file. Excuse me. So we're going to create just create a fresh project um, and. You know, for our, our purposes, we're going to be doing like sound effects, voiceovers, that kind of stuff. So I'd say go ahead and create a stereo uh, audio track because um, we'll, we'll use it for something eventually. So, uh, and then the, what you need to do is you need to go into the mixer um, and you know, just down here at the bottom, go to options and then create new auxiliary channel strips. Uh, here, you want to make sure it's stereo, input, you want to go to Sibelius 7 and rewire, mix the left right, um, and then you can just let the output be the standard stereo output. Okay, So then we go to create, now we've got an auxiliary channel strip, and this right here is going to be our Sibelius volume. Right? So I'm just going to double click on that title, it's titled Aux 1 by default, I'm going to go ahead and just call that Sibelius so we can sort of arrange things and I'm going to go ahead and double click on this also and I'm going to go ahead and change this to like you know uh, sound effects one or something like that so when we are playing back what you do inside this fader uh, right here will control the volume of Sibelius versus uh, the other sounds in logic so now um, I'm just going to go ahead and create, uh, I'll just open up the <coughs> um, the bundle and like I said earlier, you got to make sure you start logic first, tell it to use rewire, then open up Sibelius and then Sibelius will open in rewire mode and I'll show you the things that will uh, allow you to double check that you are in fact running in rewire mode. All right, cool. So here we are inside Sibelius. Um, all right. So now, um, yeah. And once again, you can do this with a, a previously opened document or whatever. Um, if you're dealing with a piece that is a strict tempo, then things can be quite easy. Um, you know, in a strict tempo the entire way through the piece. So for example, like I've got this set at 152, so I'm going to go into Logic, and I'm going to set this to 152 as well. Unfortunately, they do not marry, which would be smart, but they don't. So I've set that to 152 now, and you'll see if I, um, let me see if I can do it this way. Just so you can see both screens. If I now play inside of Logic, both software programs are playing at the same time. 
So you see the playback line in Sibelius, you see the playback line in Logic. Once again, they're both moving at 152, so the bar numbers correspond um, correctly. Now something that you'll have to you'll you'll notice when you mess around with this, like if you're in Logic, you know, and you're playing around with this and then you stop, I'm not doing anything, it jumps right back into Sibelius automatically. The way that you can disable that is by turning off your keypad. Okay? So I turn the keypad off and you can always turn it back on in the view menu under keypad. So now I'll go back into Logic. If I hit play and then stop, Logic stays the primary application. So that's a good thing to know. Um, something that is uh, would be good to know as well that I was figuring out last night whoops, is say for example you wanted to start you know, you've got maybe something that you want to happen like on uh, sorry, like on bar 5 if you want to get the cursor there right away like other than you know dragging it in, in logic if you want to get the cursor there you can just highlight whatever bar you want or whatever you know the actual bar line and if you press Y on the keyboard um, if you press Y on the keyboard the playback line will jump to wherever that is so for example you know maybe bar 8 I'm going to press Y the playback line jumps to bar 8 the same thing has now happened inside Logic the reason why this would be helpful is because say for example when we're writing in a tune but there's maybe a slight a shell or a retard. Like I said, that does not reflect. Those tempo changes do not reflect inside logic. So there'll be a spot where eventually, sometime before, you know, after the uh, tempo adjustment, the retard or shell, whatever, the bar numbers will no longer line up. So you might hit click bar 20, you know, but it's now bar 25 in logic. And that's just because the tempo has now fluctuated. So, um, what I would recommend doing is, say for example, you know, you want the sound effect to happen here. Um, and I'm going to click Y. Playback line jumps there. And then wherever this playhead is, that's now where you are lined up inside Sibelius. So even though, once again, you know, we're at different tempo, uh, tempi, uh, or I'm sorry, the same tempo in, the, in, this, in these documents, when you change it up, this will start to not line up. So, once you drag in whatever you know, sound effect or voiceovers in here, you can start to mess around with them. Um, a quick, quick little thing that might you might find helpful is if you want to adjust the length of a pit or length length of a sample, but you do not want to affect the pitch. You can do that in some external applications, things like Audacity. But then you'd have to worry about jumping back and forth between the applications. So, I'll show you a little something, uh, this flex time feature, um, <coughs> and I'm not sure if you know about it, but if you don't, then this will be good for you. So, I'm going to pull up, um, anything, it's fine. Now, you won't be able to hear this, um, uh, it's pretty funky. So, uh, you won't be able to hear this just because of the method and how I'm recording this but you can at least see the process all right so I'm going to zoom in a little bit excuse me so say for example you know this this last three bars um, you know this last three bars and maybe you want it to last uh, two bars or maybe two and a half bars but once again you don't want to change the pitch um, you know, this would be useful for like some of the bass drop stuff that you wanted to do if we have like any of these little sound effects that we maybe just want to last a little bit longer and when we're going back and forth between Sibelius and Logic we could say man you know in the playback it's starting to sound you know I want the sample to be a little bit longer a little shorter if you highlight this uh, the track the, the sample that you want to adjust and then you click on flex up here and you may have to turn it on inside the the options, but they may be there. Um, but you go to flex, and what you want to do is click on this drop down menu and go to polyphonic. Okay, now, and if it's a long sample, it sometimes takes a little bit to analyze. But if you move your cursor over to the edge, you can now click on this and drag it, and it just squeezes that time down. So now when I play it back, 
it's playing at the same pitch, same rhythm, now it's just faster or slower. And it does a really nice job. Some samples, depending on the quality, um, you know, it may, you know, if it's a lower quality sample, then you'll hear uh, some, some the degrading and the ability to do this kind of thing. So once again, so that's a good thing to know about samples. Um, once everything's said and done, um, then uh, if you want to export these things together, what you need to do is you now export the audio file from Sibelius, bring that into Logic. I'll just do that once just so you can see that. So it took a second to load this up. It's all right. Uh, something else that's good to know while that's loading up. Say for example, let me zoom out. Okay. Say for example, you get, you know, like for example, in this other show I'm working on, I've got like a million, you know, just tons and tons of samples up here, uh, and you know they're because once again because of the tempo fluctuation, uh, you know, they're happening on the E of beat, you know, bar 17, beat two. Um, uh, you know, it would happen on a in a in a downbeat you know, here, but because of the tempo fluctuation, it's now off from this gridded tempo map, if you will. So once you get a couple of things, and let me, uh, I'm going to get out of this view just by pressing A twice. A once pulls up the automation, A a second time gets me back into the, uh, the regular view. But if I want to go back into it, I'll need to highlight it and click on flex. So A twice, and I'm done. So let's just say, uh, I had a bunch of different samples and you know you spend a lot of time sort of fine tuning them and you want to make sure that you don't accidentally nudge one you know one way or the other you can highlight all the things that you want to lock and then if you go under region you can say lock s and p t e position and that actually locks them so no matter what if you click and drag it 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 will make it sort of spring it back but, um, so that's a good thing to do once you sort of solidified each one because it, you know, it could be any number of things that would happen. And if you need to adjust it a little bit, you can go in there, region, unlock, and then say, for example, you need to nudge it a little bit. You can just highlight it, say nudge right, you know, and it's just adjusting it, you know, by the smallest amount, region, lock it again, and now you're up and running. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so now, um, if I... Um, let's see. I don't know all the sounds. Um, another thing you'll notice is that uh, there there can be some some performance issues for sure. Marrying up these two programs, um, the best thing to do would be to put you know have one file on one hard drive, one to file on another hard drive. But you can do it. Uh, like this file has tons and tons of stuff so because I've not because I'm using logic I'm reading and writing from logic and reading and writing from Sibelius and have both his applications from the one hard drive it's uh, you know, it's struggling a little bit but um, once you got everything done let's see if, so they're moving together and you see that those those levels are moving uh, on that fader and I can once again change that a little bit but back to my original purpose say for example you're ready to bring this into logic to now create your own audio file of the export Sibelius exported Sibelius file in addition to the logic sound effects I'm just going to go to export I'm just going to toss this on the desktop for now oh, oh, so that's good to know uh, sorry. So anyways, you get an audio, export it, and you're going to have to export it when you're outside of, um, 
outside of rewired mode, so you don't have to quit logic and restart Sibelius. Um, it's something I have not played around with, um, which doesn't look like it's an option. Anyways, so you'll do that, and I can just show you how that would be done. Sorry. Yeah, so I'll just drag this in. We'll pretend like this is the exported audio file. You just bring that in underneath your stuff. And then you can just double check it, make sure that it still lines up appropriately. If not, then you can uh, you know, adjust as necessary. But then once you're done with all that, you want to select everything that you've done. Right? And you're going to get a bounce once you've got the audio file ready to go bounce and then you can do it as a WAV file, like a high quality WAV file, or just an MP3 um, and let it normalize. So that's sort of a whole other thing. So give that a shot. It should give you sort of the ups and downs, the ins and outs, the lefts and rights of doing rewire with Logic uh, Pro and Sibelius 7.